Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. This is episode 34. Uh, I think I said last week that that was episode 34, but I was wrong. That was episode 33, and this is episode 34. Unless, of course, I'm wrong again, <laughs> in which case the proper episode will be in the title. So, <laughs> I am your host, Christy. You can find me on Ravelry as Christy Lael and on Instagram as Christy Lael without the dash. We also have a relatively crafty podcast group on Ravelry where we have knit alongs and giveaways and chatter and ch the showing off of finished objects, and it's just a really good group to be involved with, I think. I do have to kind of apologize for how little I have been involved with the group lately. I'm having a hard time getting back into the swing of the Ravelry group since um, I went on my trip and, um, or, well, since my parents came to visit. I, um, I keep wanting to and have great, you know, intentions, but um, they haven't quite come to fruition, those intentions. Um, there's just been a lot going on here in our personal life. You know, my folks were here for two weeks, and then um, then the week after they left, my cousin came and visited for three days, um, and then um, we've been dealing with school and, you know, finishing up summer, and there are just some other things that have been going on personally that I can't divulge yet, but um, but I will be able to in a couple of weeks. It's all good things, but um, just stuff that I that isn't official yet, so I can't really talk about it yet. But um, but yeah, it's just been taking up time, and um, and so I've I've not been able to really focus much on the group lately. So I do apologize for that. I know that I had said when I got back from our trip that I was going to get right back into the group, and I just really haven't. Um, but but I do have that as a plan, and, and I will be doing it soon. And speaking of the group, we are having um, our Summer Socks Dis Knit Along right now. Um, if you're not familiar, it is a three-month knit along, and it's all about socks. It starts on, uh, it started on June 21st, which was the Summer, so summer Socks Dis. <laughs> uh, it started on June 21st, which is the Summer Solstice hence the name Summer Soxtis, and it will end on September 21st, which is the Autumn Inqui- which- and it will end on September 21st, which is the Autumn Equinox, which is the end of summer, so it's the entirety of summer. And so we are, what, uh, halfway through, uh, give or take? And so you still have, um, all of August and 21 days in September, so like seven weeks left with which to knit socks, basically. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of sock, it doesn't matter what kind of pattern, it doesn't matter what size. You know, you can knit knee socks, you could knit thigh-high socks if you really want to, although it'd probably be a little crazy to do that. Um, you can knit shorties, you can knit regular length socks, uh, you can knit very intricate lace or cable patterns, and you can knit plain vanilla socks. You can make scrappy socks, you can make stripy socks, you can make solid socks, you can make variegated socks. You can make adult socks, you can make kid socks. My only request is that it be two socks um, that go into an entry, uh, two adult size socks. If you are making kid socks, it needs to be four kid socks to go in for one single entry. There is an FO thread in the group, and I ask you to put one entry in each um, each post in the thread, so as I want you to get full credit for all of your socks. So if you knit two pairs of adult socks, then put them in their own entry, uh, their own post in the thread. And then I also encourage you to post your finished items in the chatter thread so that people can ooh and ah uh, over them properly because I don't want any chattering in the FO thread. It makes it a lot easier for me to run for the um, for the prizes at the end, if there's just the entries in the in the thread, so so yeah, I have knit a couple of pairs of socks for the Cal, although not nearly as many as I was expecting. I um, today is August first, so July is over, and I have averaged, you know, five pairs each month. 
um, since January. Uh, however, July is going to bring that average down quite a lot because I only knit three pairs of socks in July, um, which some of you may think is a it is still a really high number, and it is, you know. Um, if, if you have a small amount of knitting time, then getting a single pair of socks done in a month is quite an accomplishment. I have a lot of knitting time right now, although that may change. Um, when I finish school, I, I need to be going back to work full time, and so my knitting time will probably uh, diminish quite a lot. Uh, my podcasting time might diminish quite a lot as well. This is kind of going off of the script, but um, but I do have to start thinking about gainful employment. <laughs> Unfortunately, I finished my accounting bachelor's degree uh, in at the end of the year, and um, and I have student loans that I'm going to need to pay off. Plus, the whole point of me going back to school and finishing up my degree was so that I could uh, go back to work full time and supplement my husband's income and become a two-income family. We have been a single income family for the past 12 years, for the entirety of our children's lives, and um, with the exception of five months last month last year when I worked uh, part-time doing the accounting for my church um, at, but that happened to be the time when Ron had been laid off from his job and so he ended up not working that entire time so we still were a single income family just um, my income was quite a bit less than his <laughs> um, but anyway I have to go back to work and so um, that's going to change things. Now I'm not going to have to go to school anymore, which is going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm so excited about that part. Um, but I am going to be working and, um, and what will probably end up happening is I will try to find a part-time job, um, after the girls go back to school this month, I will start looking for a part-time job to kind of get myself back into the swing of things and then, um, and try to, get the family accustomed to me working and not being available 24-7 for all kinds of things. And then um, when I finish my schooling, um, which actually is is like the second week of January, uh, because the school breaks for, for Christmas. So if they didn't have the Christmas break, I would finish in December. Um, and then I will go back and try to find a full-time job. So. Um, so that is going to change things uh, here in the next couple of months. I will probably not be, um, I may end up making my vlogs or my, I may end up making my podcasts every other week instead of every week and they, the day may change. Like right now I do it on Tuesdays, which is a great day for me, but if I'm working full time, I'm going to be working Monday through Friday. That will mean that I won't be available to spend the day on Tuesday, uh, recording and then editing and posting a vlog, so I may end up having to do it at another time, or later on on Tuesday, you know, I may do it after work. If I can get proper lighting, I can do it after work, but, um, but the point of this whole digression is to kind of prepare everybody, myself included, for some eventual changes that are going to be happening with my channel. Um, I, I have two channels. Uh, I have a booktube channel as well that I've had open for um, two years, more than two years, um, and I'm actually very seriously considering just shutting that down when I have to go back to work full time because I don't think that it's going to be fair to my family um, and to myself and to the people who watch my videos if I can't devote the time that I need to to running two channels. And honestly, I have I feel like this is a better fit for me personally uh, with the knitting podcast than the booktube channel. I, I, knitting is still a bigger part of my life and something I'm, you know, I love reading. Uh, I love reading, but my reading is slightly under my knitting. Like I could go a week without reading a book and still feel like I've I'm okay, but I don't think I could go a week without knitting, without feeling like something is definitely wrong. So, um, so yeah, I haven't quite made a, a definite uh, decision on that, but I feel like if one of the channels has to go, it's definitely going to be the book one. Um, and uh, and yeah, so anyway, sorry, way way off on a tangent there, but I um. 
I didn't get, as, I only got three pairs of socks done this month, uh, this past month, and so, um, so it feels weird um, to not have as much to show. Now, I know part of that is because we were camping, um, and as much as I would like to have extra time to knit camping, um, this was not a relaxing camping trip. This was a go, go, go camping trip, and so, um, so I didn't get much done, and then I was also focusing on my mom's sweater, and I was knitting my brother's birthday hat, and so, you know, that was half the month. I mean, right there was gone, and so I only had two weeks left with which to knit my socks, and I got the three pairs of socks done in those two weeks, which is good. And that kind of brings us into our FOs, because the final pair that I, I knit for the month um, is the only, well, the only full FO that I have to show you, and that is this pair right here. Now, if you recall, this was a pair that I was knitting for a friend, and she sent me the yarn. It is Miss Babs Hot Shot. The hot shot, the base is called Hot Shot, and the colorway was Joan of Arc, and um, it was a really pretty autumny colorway. I found that the socks kind of knit up differently um, because of the size of of my friend's feet, I did some adjustments to this pair. I wanted to make sure that it fit her properly. So um, so I did uh, a couple of extra stitches in the foot that I do on my own socks, and then I added a couple of stitches right uh, right before the heel, and so the, um, the ankle and leg cuff is a little bit more stitches than I normally put in my socks as well. So they don't fit quite as well on the blockers, but, um, but they should fit her feet, and that's the important thing. But it did change the um, kind of the the, the color pattern um, as it went. You can see that the the foot is much more mottled, and then the um, the leg did kind of like a spiral um, pooling thing, which doesn't look bad, but it's just a change. So I knit this is my basic recipe, um, a Turkish cast on and then did them toe up. I did a fish lips kiss heel instead of an afterthought heel, which is the only difference from my recipe, and then I knit the leg to her specifications, did one by one ribbing, and ended on Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, and I got both of them done. Uh, the second sock went much faster than the first, as I had expected, because I finally managed to, to make sure that the sizing was right, and that was uh, what was kind of making me drag my heels on the first sock. Um, interestingly, uh, I was kind of actually pleasantly surprised and pleased. Uh, this skein came with a knot in it. And, you know, that happens. Um, thankfully, it doesn't happen very often, but uh, it is not unusual for but it is not unusual for a um, for a single skein of sock yarn to have a knot. I I don't get upset for a single knot. I get upset when there's more than one. Um, I feel like there's no reason why you can't go through 400 yards of fingering weight yarn without knots. But okay, there was a knot. So um, I it I I undid the knot. Uh, when I was winding the yarn and had two separate balls. There was one that was obviously the lion's share of the yarn, and then there was another one that was about 30 grams. And I figured, well, I'll do my best to see if I can get it all out of this big, this one big yarn, uh, big ball of yarn. Um, and as I was finishing up the second sock, um, after I finished the heel, that leftover bit of the ball, the biggest ball of yarn, was really starting to dwindle, and I was like, oh no, I don't know, am I going to make it? Am I going to, am I going to have to, like, get up here and then have, have to start that second ball? That's going to totally suck. Um, and as I got closer and closer to the ribbing, I, I thought, oh my goodness, it's really getting small. I really was afraid the most, I think, that I was going to run out of yarn during the ribbing, and I hate having to weave in ends and start a new ball in ribbing. It just, I don't know, I never like the way it looks. With with stockinette, I can I can make it look pretty seamless, but I always feel like with um, with ribbing, it never looks quite right. So, um, so anyway, I was starting to sweat bullets when I got up to the ribbing, but I made it. I made it to the end without having to pull out that second ball. But I wanted to show you how much I had left. 
because it isn't very much. This. This is all that I had left. What is that, like four feet of yarn? Um, so I really cut it close, uh, but it was, it was like one of those, you almost feel like, like you won the lottery because you won the yarn chicken game. Um, and I don't always win yarn chicken, so it's always really extra nice when I do. So anyway, I was able to um, finish those pairs of socks with the biggest ball of yarn, and then I used um, a couple of grams of the smaller ball to make my little mini sock representation. Um, and, and yeah, so I got that finished, and I uh, feel pretty good about that. I'm able to now send those socks to my friend. She's been waiting very patiently. Now, as I said, she lives in a climate that there's no need for hand-knit socks right now anyway, so it's not like she's been chomping at the bit for these socks. She won't wear them for another couple of months. But when I know somebody's waiting for a finished object from me, I really feel obligated to get it done quickly. And I started those socks in June and then didn't finish them until the end of July. So I feel like I really kind of fell down on that for her. And um, I didn't like that feeling. So now that they're done, I feel a little bit more relaxed about the whole thing. I give myself all kinds of anxiety problems just by sitting in my head and, and, and assuming things and whatnot. Um, so anyway, so I've got those finished, and that is the last thing that I finished in July. Um, I did start another pair of socks in July, but I didn't get them finished in time. I thought about not starting them, but Sunday was the 30th, and I needed to have um, something to knit while I was at church. So I went ahead and started my next pair of socks, and they just won't count for any of the knit-alongs that I'm in, and that's that's okay, really. Um, so I did do some other... I do have some other finished objects, but they're, they're mini representations of socks, so they don't really count like a big full pair of socks do. But if you recall, I didn't like that I knit all of the socks in June and didn't knit any of the mini representations, and so um, I ended up having to knit like six pairs uh, or six mini representations um, in July, and um, I don't like having that many all at once, so I'm trying to keep better track, uh, keep better on top of my mini socks. So. So to, um, to have the mini representations of the socks that I knit in July, uh, I also already showed you I did the Miss Babs one, and then this is the mini of the box of socks, socks that I did for July. This was uh, Canon Hand Dyes in her MCM base in the colorway Slytherin, um, which was such a great, such a great colorway. And then, uh, lastly, this was the Desert Vista Dye Works um, sock that I knit for July as well. And um, this is in the Viso base. The colorway was Frederick, and I love, I love this one. Um, these socks are going to definitely be on my favorites list. This bright neon orange makes me so happy. I love it against all these muted colors. It's, that pop is so awesome. Uh, so I got those done, and then I went ahead and started on the socks that I plan on knitting for August. Uh, I'd already picked those out. Delaney helped me um, help me pick out some of those colorways, and she helped me um, wind them up yesterday. She really enjoys being able to help wind the yarn. Um, the the slight OCD tendencies that I have. Um, I have to really push those down because she doesn't do it the way I do it <laughs> and they never end up being wound exactly the way I would do it, but um, she really gets a kick out of it and something I can share with her. So uh, so anyway, so we dyed, or we dyed, we spun yarn, oh no, we didn't spin it either, we wound yarn uh, yesterday and I worked on some of the future mini representations, so I'll show those to you. 
I have this one first. This rainbow is amazing. So, um, so this is kind of getting into, so this is kind of getting into um, future knitting as well as showing you FOs. Um, this is my box of socks for August. Uh, this is the skein that Delaney picked out. Um, and can you blame her? I mean, look at this rainbow, right? This is Blueberry Pie Studio, who is a small indie dyer. I'm assuming she still dyes. I, I don't know. I've had this in my stash for a while. It's a self-striper, obviously, and it is called My Crayon Box. My Box of Crayons. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's the rainbow in order. Um, you can see on the mini, I didn't get the purple, but, um, but that's okay. I, I tend to miss one color in all of these stripers. Uh, so anyway, so this will be my, as I said, my, um, box of socks for August. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I think it's going to be gorgeous. And then for, um, and then I also knit my Lolo Did It. Uh, this is Hippo for Independence, which is her uh, most recent Hippo colorway, Hippo for the Holidays colorway. And, um, and you can see that it's the base Hippo gray with uh, blue and red stripes for, you know, independence. Um, not stripes, blue and red speckles for independence. And, um, and I will be making this into a pair of socks for myself, for her knit along, um, and then for heels and toes, I am using um, some leftover little low lows that I have. I think this is Betty Davis eyes, and this is Sriracha. So I'm going to alternate. Um, so sock one will have the blue for the toe and the cuff, and sock two will have the red for the toe and the cuff, and the blue for the heel, and sock one will have the red for the heel. So. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to look cute because I don't have enough in each of these to do a full pair. Um, so I think it'll work out perfectly. And that's all the minis that I have. Um, so I will save the rest of the future knitting for after I finish my whips. I only have one whip, so it's not like I have a lot to show you. It's the one that I showed you last week that I said I was going to start. This is stashables.co.uk, uh, no, not UK, dot, uh, NZ. It's a New Zealand-based dyer, and the colorway is Rainbow Lorikeet. Um, so it's, it's three colors, uh, blue and green and orange, um, and then there's some, some added colors where, where the two main colors mix together. Um, and this is what I've got so far. This is a commission job. If you don't recall the story, one of my Canadian friends went to one of the fiber shows and picked up some um, Bling Your String sock blanks for me right at the beginning of summer, end of spring. And when I offered to pay her for the sock blanks, she asked if I would instead just knit her a couple of pair of socks. So I am doing that, and this is yarn that she sent to me. Um, I have to admit, I am not a fan of the way this is knitting up. Let me give you a close-up. So, it's okay. The colors, I like the colors, but I just don't, I don't really like the way that they're coming out. But, you know, it doesn't really matter because they're not socks for me. <laughs> they're socks for my friend. And um, so, yeah. So, I am going to hopefully finish this first sock up here pretty soon. Um, the whole pair shouldn't take me very long, uh, and, and so, yeah, so this is definitely a pair that I will finish in August, and then I'm hoping to get her second pair as well done in August so I can mail them both back to her, um, before Canada starts getting their cold weather, uh, which, you know, they're north, so they get it soon and for long periods of time, so, um, uh, so, uh, so I'll go ahead and now get into my future knitting, um, the socks that I'm planning on knitting in August. Um, I normally show those to you at the end of the month. I show you what I'm going to knit for socks for the next month. Uh, so this is the second skein that she sent for me to knit. This is Crafty Hippie. 
And the colorway is Midnight Forest, and you can probably tell that this is going to be a striper. It's like this kind of olivey green and black, um, so this one should knit pretty quickly. Stripes always knit faster. Um, she did apologize for sending me a black skein. She said, I didn't think about how much you hate black, but um, I don't mind knitting black for other people. Um, in stripy socks. Like, I wouldn't want to knit a full pair of black socks for somebody. Um, but if somebody has a pair of, uh, has some stripy yarn that they need knit into socks and it has a black stripe, I don't mind that so much. So, um, so yeah, so I will be knitting this one as well. And then I had asked Delaney to help me pick out my yarns. Um, yesterday, I, some of them were already picked out, but I had to pick out my, um, um, my box of socks. And then I also had to pick out my Desert Vista Dye Works for August. And so um, I showed Delaney what I had, and she picked out the one that she liked. I knew which one she was going to pick out. And it's this one. And again, like with the rainbow, can you, can you really blame her? I mean, look at how beautiful that is. It's gorgeous, right? I'll show you a close-up of the rainbow, too, just so that you don't feel like you've missed out. Oh, and while we're at it, why don't we do a close-up of the <laughs> Hippo for Independence. Let's just do close-ups all over the place. I've already got my camera set for a close-up, so... Ron and I are looking to get new cell phones here pretty soon, and I'm giving really serious thought to giving getting the um, Samsung Galaxy S8, which is supposed to have an amazing camera on it, and I'm thinking about changing the way that I vlog, or, or the way that I podcast, and instead of using my uh, my Nikon camera, um, which I like. I have a Nikon, um, or Nikon? 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 I don't remember how you pronounce it. Um, <clears throat> but it's a D5200, and it's a good camera. Um, it takes great pictures, it takes good video, but it doesn't have autofocus, as I've told you guys before. So I can focus it, uh, and then it stays focused throughout the entire video. I did uh, get this, um, what is this called, a, a remote control, and I can change the focus uh, with this button right here, but again, it, it stays whatever focus I change it at. So it's kind of a hassle um, to, deal, to fiddle with the focus. But I'm thinking that with this new phone, if it works out well, maybe I can start doing my, my podcasts on the phone instead, and that will have an autofocus while I'm recording, at least until I can get a new camera. I do want to get a new camera, but I have a hard time justifying the cost of a new camera, which is decent, you know, five, six hundred dollars for something that I, that I would need. Um, when, you know, I can't really justify that cost when the camera that I have really works well. I mean, and it's and it's only uh, maybe two years old. So um, yeah, I think it'll be two years old in October. So it's not really like I can really justify um, buying a new camera. <clears throat> maybe after I get a job, then I can justify a lot of things because I will be working hard for the money. She works hard for the money. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, 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 sorry. Anyway, <laughs> Delaney picked this one. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really trying to make this vlog. Lo I'm really trying to make this podcast longer. Last week's was only 16 minutes long, which is way too short. And so, like, I'm, I'm not shutting myself down. Like, I'm not filtering <laughs> anything right now. Is whatever comes out of my hip brain and goes right through my mouth. And that's fine, right? <sighs> Knitting. Yarn. Socks. Delaney picked this one. This is Desert Vista Dye Works, uh, obviously because it's for my Desert Vista Dye Works August socks. The colorway is emeralds, sapphires, and prints. So it is sapphire blue, it's not really emerald green, but it's a pretty green. And then purple, the prince purple, you know, uh, like his, you know, the color purple rain, like that prince, vibrant royal purple. And, um, and I will be making these into um, socks for myself for this month. Um, I will be 
pre-washing these socks because I have found, uh, as much as I love Desert Vista Dye Works colorways um, and their yarn base and whatnot, um, I have found that blue and purple uh, do tend to run. I get them on my fingers when I'm knitting the socks and um, then they leave stripes on my feet. So I will be pre-washing these in some some vinegar. Uh, if you are a hand dyer, uh, let me know down below what the best way to do that is because I, I actually haven't done that before, but I have heard that vinegar works well. Um, I've also heard that I can use a color catcher, but I, I don't know what that is really, um, except for that it's like a, isn't it like a dryer sheet that you put on the water and, and it absorbs and attracts all the color that comes out of the socks? I don't know. Uh, enlighten me if you are in the know. And, um, and because I really, I really love this colorway and I don't want it to ruin, um, other things that I am knitting or have knit. I don't, don't want to put it in the wash and then find out that all of my socks now have a blue and purple tinge. Lastly, um, the last pair of, last, the uh, yarn that I am going to knit, uh, that I've already picked out for August, um, and again, I, I might knit more for August. We'll see. I have what one, one, two, three, four, four, and then a finished pair, uh, and then this one. So that's five, five pairs, and, and finishing up a pair. It's possible that I could get all that done and still have some time. It it's possible that I won't. Uh, but these are the ones that I have picked out so far. Uh, I have this one picked out for July. It is one of the... It's really the only one that I didn't get to for July that I had picked out. Uh, and that is this gorgeous sock blank that um, Aaron at Bling Your String dyed. This is one of the sock blanks that I am knitting the socks as payment for. Um, and I... I love this. This is her Kiss and Teal colorway, although she doesn't repeat colorways, so unfortunately, unless you can get this in a um, D-stash, you're kind of out of luck, um, and you really are out of luck because it's a gorgeous colorway. Uh, so I'm very excited to knit this. I want to knit it right now, um, but I am waiting. I'm trying to be responsible. Uh, I will be able to allow myself to at least knit the mini of this because I'm trying to do those beforehand as I said so I still have to do this many and this many and this many and then I will have all my minis done oh well I do I also need to do uh, this one for the rainbow lorikeet but I'm gonna wait obviously because I'm in the middle of a sock um, so yeah those I will be able to show you next week and hopefully at least maybe two finished pairs of socks that would be great. I also need to get started back onto my mom's sweater. She sent me a text yesterday, the day before, asking me if I'd finished her sweater yet, and I told her that I hadn't. Um, and I told her that I was knitting all the socks that I had that I had abandoned while I was working on her sweater while she was here. And um, and I said, besides, you don't need a hand knit sweater right now. The forecast for her town, for this entire week, is in triple digits. Yeah, their lowest day is tomorrow, uh, where it's only going to be 97, but um, but they're getting up to 103 on Friday, which isn't the highest that they've gotten to. They've gotten up uh, above 108. Um, it's been a very hot summer down in Southern California, or their area of Southern California, and, um, and yeah, I <laughs> do not envy them at all. Um, today, or I think tomorrow, is one of our hottest days, and it's going to be 85. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I haven't even turned on the air conditioner today. It's amazing. But, um, but yeah, I told her, I said, you don't need a, a, a hand-knit sweater right now. You can't hardly wear long pants. And, um, and she said, that doesn't matter. It's, it's principle of the thing. So I promised her that I would get her sweater done in August, um, and... She, she definitely wants it before Christmas. So when their fall hits, which looks like it's not going to hit until well into November, sometimes they start getting cooler in October, but it's still in the 80s in October there. Um, and she may need it uh, in November, and so I'll make sure that I have it done for her, um, you know, this month, August, or, you know, in September, and get it out to her. Um, so... 
So yeah, I just have the sleeves. The sleeves should knit up pretty quickly. I'm going to knit them in the round up. Uh, I think that's how the pattern calls for, but I would do it anyway. And then I will um, join them. I have the body all done except for the yoke. So the sleeves, once they're done, basically the knit sweater is going to knit itself. The yoke is going to be super fast, um, partly because there's not much to it, but also because that's where the cabling is, and that's the interesting part, um, and so there's going to be things that I'm going to have to do on every row, which is going to make it more interesting and more fun to knit, as opposed to the miles of stockinette that it is so far. I wanted to take a minute and show you the the yarns that I have set out for the rest of the um, uh, box of socks. Um, I told you, I've mentioned several times throughout the year that I have pulled out 12, or I had, now, now most of them are socks, but I had pulled out 12 different skeins of old stripy yarn deep stash that I'd had for a long time. Uh, one of the problems that I ran into when I was taking so many knitting commissions, um, so many sock commissions especially, was that I was knitting socks all the time, but for other people. And I didn't mind doing that at all. I enjoyed it. But um, but one of the things that I ran into was that my stash uh, just kind of languished. I didn't knit it very often because I was off, most often knitting somebody else's. And, um, and, and so now I have yarns that I've had for five, six, seven years, some of them. Some of them only two or three years, but a lot of them a lot longer. And I just never got around to knitting them. Now that I don't really take commissions very often, I'm knitting a lot more out of my stash, but I find myself grabbing the new stuff because that's the stuff I'm excited about. That's not stuff that I've been sitting and looking at for the past five years. So when I decided to do the Box of Socks Cal, I figured it would be a good idea to kind of use this opportunity to knit these older uh, skeins. And that's what I have been doing. But I've never showed you. Uh, but I never showed you what I was knitting uh, or where I was picking them from. I showed you what I was knitting, obviously, because you saw them when I was knitting them. Uh, but I never showed you what I was picking from. So I only have four skeins left uh, for September, October, November, and December. And so I thought I would show them to you. I may even do a poll for the next four months. Well, I guess three months because December. There will only be one skein left. There won't be any picking. But I wanted to show you. Um, but yeah, I may do a poll um, coming up and, and help having you guys help me pick uh, what I'm going to knit, knit next. I will put the poll on um, on Instagram. And, um, and you'll notice that a lot of these are from um, <laughs> A Million Stars because she's one of my favorite dyers, as I've mentioned, so I bought a lot of her yarn over the years and, um, and taken payment of it uh, as, um, for commission jobs as well, because everybody knew that she was my favorite stripy dyer, so they sent me uh, her yarn as payment. Uh, and then, unfortunately, the other one, uh, those are three, they're all a million stars, and then the last one is um, is a dyer that is defunct now, which is too bad because she was very talented, um, but she just could never get her shop off the ground, and, um, and so she has closed the virtual shop doors, as it were. Uh, so anyway, let me get into it. I'll start with the million stars. The first one I have is... Uh, this one, which is a two-color striper, as you can see. So it's going to have nice, big, thick stripes, probably 10, 10 rows. That's what she normally does. Uh, this colorway is the Electric Boogaloo. It's blue and bright, bright green. Yeah, this is going to be great. I have thought about taking uh, one of these two-color stripes and maybe doing one of those um, interesting... Um, construction socks instead of plain vanilla like um, like skew. So there's that one and then the next one is in her Penelope base which is also 80-20 but it's a little bit uh, more tightly spun so it kind of looks bumpy uh, and this is in turned right round which is blue and purple and gray striped. And then the last one from um, from a million stars is in the Cirque Twisted, 
which is a, an, an MCN, um, highly spun, and it is in We're All Mad Here. This was actually a gift from a friend. Uh, it's blue and red and yellow. And I had two skeins of this that I was going to use to make knee socks, and I ended up swapping one, and I kind of wish that I hadn't because I think it would have made amazing knee socks. But I love, 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 love these colors. And then the fourth skein that I have for my um, box of socks is in white iris yarn. And as I said, this shop is no longer. Um, but this is in the colorway Strawberry Lemonade. It is also another two-color striper with just a bright yellow and red. So yeah, you will see those four skeins come up, uh, each one each over the next four months as I finish up my box of socks for the year. Um, I am not sure if I'm going to do box of socks every year. Um, I could because I already knit socks. I mean, I'm, I'm going to knit socks every year, um, all every month, all year long. So I could do it, but, um, but I'm not sure. Uh, part of the thing that I'm reticent about is having the socks just kind of sitting there uh, without being worn all year, although I do know that I could wear them. I don't have to keep them out. I have chosen to do that this year. Um, I don't know if I could do that for a second year in a row, though. Um, there's been several times when I've kind of looked over at my box. You know what? Let me show you my box. So this is where I keep my box of socks. This is my box of oh, socks. I guess it's not where I keep my box of socks. It is the box. And you can see that I also keep all of my mini representations of my socks in here until I find a better place to store them. I'm trying to remember what order. These are not in order. I think this was January. Um, this pair here. And this was February. I don't know. I don't remember. March. April, May, June, July. I know that this was June and July. And this was May. No. It, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that these are the six socks that I have made so far. Seven socks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven socks that I have made for the year so far. And, um, and I will continue to do so. I will also continue to keep my little mini socks in here. i got to put the new ones in here. I'm going to do that now because I showed them to you. So, there we go. We've done um, our FOs and whips and future knitting and way in the future knitting and past knitting. And I guess the only thing left to talk about is... Um, is my yarn haul. I didn't purchase any yarn again this week. In fact, I didn't even go to knitting this past week. Um, so I wasn't out and about to purchase yarn. Um, this past week was um, the Booktubeathon, which is a week-long readathon that is put on by one of the more popular booktubers. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, Booktube is what is like the book reading community of YouTube. So like the knitting podcast part of YouTube could be called KnitTube. Uh, this is BookTube. So anyway, as I said, one of the popular booktubers puts on a readathon uh, one week in the summer every year for the past, I think this was the fourth year. And so I was a part of that. And um, so I read a lot this week. Um, and and I was trying to get my homework done and read a lot. I ended up reading eight books. Uh, two of them were graphic novels, and two of them were, were less than 200 pages. But I still read eight books this week, and uh, this past week. And I, um, and I was kind of trying to focus on schoolwork um, during off time. So instead of going to knit night on Tuesday, I did homework. And... Um, and got that done. Um, so I didn't have... Um, yarn to be tempted by this week, and um, and I didn't watch any knitting podcast this week either because I was spending that time reading, um, and so yeah, so I didn't buy anything this week. However, I did get two packages of things that I had bought previously. 
The first one is my Rainbow of the Month skein uh, from Knitterly Things. And it's gorgeous, uh, as it always is. I'm so glad that I joined this sock club. This is the best sock club that I've ever been in. Uh, just simply because I always know every month that it's going to be amazing, because it's going to be rainbow. <laughs> um, so anyway, if you haven't received your skein, then I would suggest that you look away. If you aren't in the sock club, have already received your skein, or just don't care, um, then here is the skein and it is the Prisma colorway and you can see it's it's a brighter take on the rainbow. Let me give you a close up. Kind of a brighter take on the rainbow. I like this one a lot. It is somewhat similar to the past two months. She's really taken like the summer brightness to heart and, and is really has come through in her colorways. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, I need to knit one. I've I've only knit one of the skeins so far this year, and I need to get on that. Um, that's another reason why I'm kind of thinking about not doing box of socks or um, Desert Vista Dye Works or 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 maybe making I could make my box of socks for next year all knitterly yarn. I have plenty of skeins for that. Hmm, that's actually something to think about. I could do that. Make it all... I could make it... except for one so far, I could make it all um, my knitterly things um, rainbow. That's a good idea, actually. That's a good idea, actually. I might just do that. Anyway, so I got this in the mail. This was for July, um, and I love it. And then the other thing that I got in the mail I'm super duper excited about. You all know how much I love you so-and-so bags. They're my favorite. I mean, I love them. I have bought many um, and kind of want to have um, at least a her, her medium bag, which is kind of a sock size bag. I want to have one for every season, not season, but yeah, well, yeah, I guess every season basically. Um, and so, um, or maybe season slash holidays. Uh, so anyway, I and I when I found out that she was doing embroidery, I fell even that much more in love. You guys have seen my foppish ferret. I love. <laughs> What is it? Um, what's the word? A um, um, anamorph? Not anamorph. That's a that's a book series. What is it called? Anthrom anthropomorphic. That's it. Anthropomorphic. Um, I love anthropomorphic animals. I always have. And so you take a ferret and you put him in a top hat with a cane and a vest and a pipe and I am in love. So yes, yeah, so I have my foppish ferret which is kind of like a spring, um, my spring bag uh, as it were. I've been using it through summer but it's kind of my spring bag and then you all know that I got the um, the bat one that has glow-in-the-dark bats on the back um, and this will be for um, for Halloween, of course, this obviously isn't a season, this is a holiday, but I will be using this for my socks, probably starting in September. So one more month with my ferret, and then I will turn into bats. I'll turn into bats. But I wanted a proper autumn bag, um, and, and I wanted another embroidery, and I wanted another anthropomorphic animal. Um, unfortunately, the one that I had my heart set on, uh, she couldn't size down to a, to a sock size bag, her medium size bag, so I had to get the large bag. But that's okay, because I will be knitting more um, sweaters in that time of month, or time of year, because it will be colder, and I will need more sweaters. So I went ahead and got the large bag with Harvey the Chipmunk. Look at him. It's obviously a blustery day because he has his scarf, which is blowing in the wind, and his little driving cap. I love Harvey the Chipmunk. I love him almost as much as my father's spirit. I just wish that she could have sized him down because he would have looked so cute on a sock bag. And then on the back, 
um, is a very autumny leaves. Um, I love when the leaves change. I love that I live in a state now where the leaves change. Uh, California it doesn't happen, and when it does happen, it's like in in December because <laughs> that's when we start getting fall weather. Uh, and then on the inside is just a very similar um, uh, fabric only with smaller leaves. And uh, so yeah, so this will be my autumn bag for my autumn sweaters. I now need to get a winter one. Um, and I want to get one that is winter but not Christmas. Uh, which which was, it's, it's always kind of a struggle because there's so many cute Christmas things out there. There are also so many cute um, autumn thing or uh, Halloween things out there, but you're limited because you can only use it for, you know, the month of the holiday and maybe the month before. Um, uh, so like, you know, this one is definitely Halloween, so I can use it for all of October and maybe September, but then I kind of have to put it away because then we're getting into Thanksgiving. Um, so this one I will be able to use for September, October, November, um, maybe even December, you know, uh, but you get more use out of it. So I need a Christmas, or I need a winter one that isn't Christmas, um, and then I need, I need to have one more, um, a proper summer one, I think. Um, because this, this one really should be spring. This feels spring to me, so I need a summer one. And, um, and then I will have my set up for the entire year. I, well, I obviously need to get this size for autumn. That, that's what I need to do, is I need to have this size and this size. Or it could be either this size or the, um, extra large, the jumbo, which I have, um, for spring, my my uh, rain my my rainy rainbow cloudy rainbows one that um, is downstairs and I can't show it to you. But um, but yeah, I need I need a sock size and a sweater size for all four seasons. So Sarah, I will be purchasing more bags over the next year while I catch up and get all the ones that I need. Um, so yeah, that is my my yarn and knitting haul for this week. Um, and I think that I have done, talked as much as I need to talk. So I am gonna go ahead and let you guys go. I'm gonna try to get this edited. I started filming late. It's three o'clock and I normally have the filming done so that I'm finishing right before lunch. But, um, but I started late. So I am going to try to get this edited before I go to knit night tonight. And, um, and yeah. I will, uh, I will talk to all of you guys uh, next week. Have a wonderful uh, rest of your day and happy knitting. Bye.